the year is 2040. Feminism has finally spread throughout the world. The seeds that started in the 20th century and accelerated rapidly throughout the first part of the 21st have finally sprouted and decimated traditionalism worldwide. As a result of females no longer being held back, hunger worldwide has been cured. All disease has been eradicated. The average lifespan is now 140 years. But that's only the beginning of all of the monumental strides achieved. Due to strong independent women finally being in control of their own destiny, The greatest injustice that has faced women throughout history is the imbalance in the dating market. So when the world united into one global economy and President Kamala Harris got voted into office with 99.7% of the vote, her first act was to stabilize the dating market. With an all-female cabinet and majority female in both Congress and Senate, it was easy to pass legislation to provide balance. The first step in her plan was to enact a robust eugenics program. Males globally were rounded up and placed in a sorting facility. The men were inspected with militant thoroughness. Their genetics were sequenced, with probability scores being produced to determine the likelihood of a woman finding them attractive. All males that did not meet the 80% mark were castrated to prevent reproduction, and then deployed to perform the manual labor needed to maintain society. The high-tier males were then released to populate the dating market. The second step was to take the hard work out of dating. President Harris was disgusted by dating in the 21st century up to that point. She could not imagine a woman having to put the effort into swiping constantly on a host of genetically inferior males, only to be forced to settle for someone that did not meet their minimum looks level for financial reasons. A female-centric dating app was developed by the Curry Unix. This app allows women to input their dating expectations down to the most minute criteria. And the AI crunches the numbers and provides women with a genetically superior male that doesn't compromise their standards. Hey, I hope your day is going well. I have great news for you. Someone is interested in you. His name is... Travis. I have been talking with him for several weeks. I would like to go forward in talking with you about him. Is now a good time? Sure. Travis. He is in his 30s. Tall. As you probably remember, Travis also thinks sex is highly important. Which means he is either already naturally dominant during sex in his relationships or is really interested in trying it. You too on the same page with this. On this app, the males are required to state exactly how long of an arrangement they were seeking, and then allows the woman to review this criteria and decide to accept, reject, or modify it. This prevented the pesky problem of men misrepresenting how committed they were just to get laid. In the past, women's only choice was to fuck the hottest men available and only hope that he wouldn't be gone when she woke up in the morning. So on three, two, one. Oh, interesting. As a final touch, the app requires all men to provide a sperm sample that is kept on hand for 10 years from the last sexual encounter in the case that a woman deems his genetics to be the best she has experienced. Doing the same. 
The man also agrees to monthly financial compensation of 40,000 a month for life to the woman. If he is incapable of paying this fine, he is castrated and relegated to work with the sub-8 males. With all the great strides in society, women are finally able to experience life at its fullest. All of their problems have been automated away. And if the wonderful life in this automated utopia appears too good to be true, that's because it is. In reality, all feminists have been locked up in an insane asylum. <gasps> I, don't, I don't want to be in here. After the sexual revolution in the West, feminists decided to reject traditionalism. They reasoned that their 20s and 30s was time to have fun. There is a vague want for a family sometime in the future, but she reasons that she is not on any sort of timeline and that she needs to experience the world, travel, and bounce from Chad to Chad. Then, one morning in her 30s, the feminist decides that her past is irrelevant and she is going to start trying to lock down an alpha Chad. She wants a man that's at the peak of attractiveness, makes billions of dollars, and is willing to settle down with her. Unfortunately for feminists, such a man does not exist. Their choices is between buying 50 cats or settling down with a beta male that they do not want. The reality of this forces them to have a mental breakdown, and they get to cope out the rest of their days in a straitjacket. <laughs>